Hello everyone, my name is Brittany Rosario and today I will be talking about pragmatics in digital spaces. I'm a junior majoring in English and Professional Communications at the Marietta campus of Kennesaw State University. I enjoy writing poetry, reading fantasy novels, and studying language. In this presentation, I will be examining and analyzing the pragmatics found in digital spaces, such as our laptops and cell phones, through the usage of social media apps like Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So to get a grasp of these concepts, we must first ask the question, what is pragmatics? According to dictionary.reference.com, pragmatics is the analysis of language in terms of the situational context within which utterances are made, including the knowledge and beliefs of the speaker and, and the relation between speaker and listener. Now, what does all of that really mean? A simpler way to define pragmatics is to say, it's the various ways we speak language based on our exposure and the exposure and values between the speaker and listener. And to get a better understanding of pragmatics, we have to take a look at speech act theory, which is a functional method in communication that the speaker performs when they make an utterance. So these utterances are just words. And if you look into the picture on the right, you'll see that there are different types of utterances. One is the propositional utterance, which is the reference to other things. The second one is elocutionary utterance, which has the intention to interact. And perlocutionary utterances have the intention to affect behavior. With that being said, let's take a look at pragmatics in today's social media culture. We have the hashtag phenomena, where we will talk about hashtag usage and the role it plays in language, as well as text message confusion, which can be caused by a misinterpretation of language between the usage of abbreviations, acronyms, and emojis. Looking at this slide, we notice that there is a picture in the upper right hand corner. And people of the older generation might say that this picture is a pound sign. People who are younger will say it is something else. But for right, for right now, let's talk about the pound sign. Originally the pound sign was used to finish a command on an automated system from your telephone as a coding symbol to print from an application on a computer and it was also used as a weight symbol before the pound symbol was programmed into computers. Now, for those of you who are involved in digital spaces, whether it be business networking or personal social interaction, you should know what a hashtag is. A hashtag is a type of meta data tag where a keyword is assigned to specific information. You can find the hashtag being used in messages, microblogging, event promotion, and social network communities. The first recorded use of the hashtag was in August of 2007 by Ben Zimmer, an American Lincoln linguist. Isn't that perfect? Now, the hashtag has become a popular sensation all over America and worldwide. It began as a part of Twitter's trending topics in 2010. So, how does this, re this relate back to speech act theory? The hashtag is actually an elocutionary utterance that's main purpose is service with intent to interact. The different values of an elocutionary utterance in a given discard are listed below. 
If you look and read each one of these values, you will find that a hashtag actually fits into each one. First, we have commensive, where a hashtag fits there because if you look at the anti-texting and driving campaign, they use the hashtag, it can wait, as part of their take the pledge campaign for people to sign a pledge and say that they will not text and drive. If we look at directive, it is a digital command that attaches a keyword to specific information. Expressive because of the, the sorry not sorry campaign by Pantene, which uses the hashtag shine strong. Representative that suggests assertion to a command, which relates back to a directive value. And lastly, a, ha a hashtag is declarative, where the person uses a hashtag has power to do whatever they want with it. This can easily break policy. One hashtag that has created controversy, especially all over Instagram, is hashtag eggplant Friday. Now that we've talked about the public use of pragmatics in digital spaces, let's get a little bit more personal and talk about text messaging. Just about everyone has their own mobile phone, but not every individual that has a mobile phone knows how to communicate effectively through text message. And being able to have effective text message communication varies based on how well you know a person because things can easily be taken the wrong way based on how you write them. So let's look at an example of what I mean. I've been trying to reach out to you all day. Are we on for tonight? What? You can't catch me. You can't catch me. I'm Lance Moore. Touchdown, bitch. What? Pause. Oh, shoot. Keegan's been texting me. Sorry, dude. Missed your texts. I assumed we'd meet at the bar. Whatever. I don't care. Sorry, dude, missed your texts. I assumed we'd meet at the bar. Whatever, I don't care. Whatever, I don't care? The fuck is his problem? Do you even want to hang out? Do you even want to hang out? Oh, let's consider it. Like I said, whatever. Like I said, whatever? Fuck this guy! Jesus, you are fucking priceless. Ah, you're the one who's fucking priceless. This, this motherfucker right here. Oh, he wants to. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You want to go right now? Hmm. Huh. Guess I could do that. Mm. Okay. Okay, let's go. He said okay. Okay, let's go! All right, you know what? You know what? You want to really do this now? Keegan, you nut. You're not putting me out. Fuck yeah, let's do it! Oh, you fucking asshole! First round's mine. Oh, no! Oh, no, there ain't gonna be no rounds, asshole! It's gonna be a fucking street fight! This son of a bitch. Because tonight we got a party on your party. Don't no! Buddy! Like I said, first round's mine. A beer and a gimlet. For my partner, Ray. What's that? Uh, I, got, I got you a baseball bat with nails in it. For my post-apocalyptic Jackie Robinson costume, how did you know? <laughs>
I hope you enjoyed that video clip from the show Key and Peel on Comedy Central. Let's take a look at some text message abbreviations and acronyms. So far, they're pretty easy to understand. We have tomorrow, tonight, be right back, best friend forever, great, I love you, talk to you later, or just later, oh my gosh, LOL, which is laugh out loud, or you could say laughing my ass off, some people say laughing my butt off. Then, un then under that you have rolling on the fucking floor because it's something so funny. They're rolling on the floor. Then you have what the fuck or what the freak for those who are censored. We have just kidding. No problem. Too much information and hugs and kisses. However, there are way more abbreviations and acronyms than could fit on this one slide. And some of them are a little bit more complex and are only used in specific discourses. One example of this is using GGWP, which is used in online gaming chat rooms. It means good game, well played. Text messaging abbreviations have actually become acronyms in spoken language and therefore are considered locutionary acts as they reference to other things. Text messaging has the intention we have when we say something or write something down. As you saw from the Key and Peel video, the relationship to the words between people and how a message is interpreted by the listener or receiver determines the force of the word. In the video, use of a phrase like, you're fucking priceless, was taken as a lighthearted compliment. And when that friend replied, no, you're the one who's fucking priceless, it was received out of context, and so on. The same thing can happen with abbreviations. If a person posts a picture of themselves that they like, they may type LMS, meaning like my status. But in a different situation, if someone posts a picture of winning a game of some sort, they will say LMS, and it'll more than likely mean last man standing. If you don't know what an emoji is, or don't have emojis on your phone, here's a picture of an emoji keyboard. In this picture, you will notice facial expressions that help identify emotion, different ethnicities, hand gestures, different actions to identify body, body language, clothing, shoes, accessories, and more. In this picture, we're actually missing some items, which include food, animals, and even buildings. If you look at these pictures, you can see that with emoji usage, an effect is produced within the receiver or sender when they read a locutionary act, which is the text message. Emoji's intent is to affect behavior, just like emojis would, would play a part in affecting behavior in person. This is what makes emojis a perlocutionary utterance. In conclusion, language is constantly evolving in digital spaces. We must stay current on acronyms and the latest hashtag usage so we can gain understanding of content and have a better chance for effective verbal and nonverbal communication with others. Here is my source page where you can find all the sources in which I got my research from. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave a reply below. If you want to see more of me, subscribe to my channel. Or you can follow me on Instagram at BJRosa. The link is in the description box below. 
Bye, everyone.